it's a lovely piece. And excuse me for trying to pronounce this. I'm going to teach you how to play Zion hört die Wächter singen. From the fourth movement of Cantata 140, known as the Sleeper's Wake. And today you're going to learn how to play this beautiful chorale on your cello. Now, if you're liking the content of my videos, please like and subscribe if you haven't done already. And before we get into it, let's talk about today's sponsor, which is musiciansgradebook.com. This is a website where you can upload your score and MP3 recording, and a professional will return to you with some constructive criticism that will elevate your playing to the next level. So check it out, musiciansgradebook.com. With that out of the way, let's get back into learning how to play Zion. Hört die Wächter singen. Excuse me, I don't speak German, but I do my best. Please correct me in the comments below. We start, of course, with the bow, and it's very legato, this entire thing. <laughs> Right here, you're going to remain in the upper half for the echo, nice and gentle. You'll probably notice in the score there is a UH meaning to play in the upper half of the bow. So start this passage getting into six. At the end of measure seven, you should be in the very upper half of the bow and then slowly work your way back with each of the bowing markings in measure eight and measure nine. Starting pick up to measure eight. But certainly I want to challenge you to play this passage here in the extended first position. And then continuing with legato and nice and gentle. And play with a very nice separation. Nice legato there, separation. And then keep the bow on the string. Now let's talk about the fingering. And to be more accurate, I'm going to switch to my teaching cello. I have my electric cello here just for a quick reference. The three dots here is the end of the first position. Three dots here is the beginning of the fourth position. If you like these cellos, check out Ned Steinberger interview in the corner right there. He's a pretty cool guy. So let's take our scale book out and we're going to turn to page one actually and play the D major scale real quick. <laughs> Let's please turn our attention to page seven in your scale book. This is going to be on the third scale, the Ré majeur, D major, two octave scale. And it's indicated here, if you want to mark up your part at home, you certainly are invited to do so. It's a one, two, four extension across these two strings, the low strings, and then relaxing your hand on the top. If you're unfamiliar with this technique of extensions, there is a link to a video right there. I suggest you check it out. The thumb and the middle finger in my pedagogy is super important to keep maintaining a good stretch. So let's play this D major two octave scale in the first position with extensions and relax. <laughs> Let us now turn to page eight 
at the bottom and the one fingering to rule them all. And I want you to apply this fingering, the one, two, four extension, one, two, four, shift, one, two, four, one, two, four, closed hand position, one, three, four. Apply that to the D major scale. It is gonna help you understand the wonderful piece by Bach because we will be using some upper third position and upper second position. I'll call it out when it comes. <laughs> Here it is, upper third position. Upper second position. Upper second. Upper third. Extended fourth. Extended first. And I'd like to take this brief moment to say rest in peace to Rick Mooney. He passed this year and he has gone up in the sky with our father. And so let's all give a prayer and a thanks to him for giving us this wonderful pedagogy of the upper second, upper third, and the lower second, lower third. It's him who I carry his legacy on. Thanks, Rick. Now it's time to learn the fingerings to this wonderful cantata chorale. So the first position is very much utilized for the first half, except for two places here in the second full measure where we have the upper second position. Now, if you are unfamiliar with these colors in the back of my scale book, you can certainly understand what the colors mean. So get a copy of my scale book. And then right here, we are looking also at the upper second position appearing in measure five. So to explain that, I'm going to play, and you're going to see this right here, and I'm going to highlight what it means to use this position, but I'm going to erase this and just play it in the extended first position. And then I'm going to play it with the upper second position to demonstrate how easy it is to play with a simple shift. <laughs> You have to do watch the bow and the movement one more time. It's kind of awkward. There's a lot happening there. So let's now place this in the hands of good, good old cello coach and play with the upper second position fingering. See that right there? Really, you drop a three on the F sharp, then cross over to the C sharp. It's an easy finger to do a bar technique, and then drop the four for the resolution of this melody. And it happens again also in measure five. Take a quick notice of what's happening with the bow and how easy it is to move. Quite easy. Now we continue with the fourth finger in the upper half of the bow, and this is what I would like for you to attempt to do. You can use the open string, but I would prefer to use the fourth finger here, since you are already there. And you drop into an extended first position here on the D string in measure six. Start again from measure five. First position, extended, stay in extended, then relax. And then th that's all in the first position. Going into measure eight, we have the first visit of the upper third position. And that's this yellow color bracket, canary color, or banana, whatever you see that yellow as. And it's one on the G sharp, two on the A, and with the acacia that's why we want to do this. In order to play the acacia we have to be in position, and we use the upper third, second finger on the D, fourth finger on the E, and the first finger on the C sharp. And then we shift to the upper second position, one, three, nice and easy, and then back to the upper third. 
And then you finish out 9 into 10 in first position with the brief visit back to the upper second there in 10 because that string crossing is very weird. So crossing over. That's very easy to do. I'm going to want, want you to take a look at the bow for this. Now, without that fingering and that shift, this is what happens. And that's burst off a lot of open A's, so we don't want to do that. We want to keep this nice and mellow. And now, shift a half step back, extend your hand with an extension across the D string and the A string. Keep it extended. You're probably wondering why we're doing the acachatura in first position here, as opposed to not doing it right here. You can certainly shift, and I'm going to show that just real quick. You can play that with the shift. You can definitely do that, but sometimes you need to learn how to play with your hand in this extended first position. The less you shift, the better. But it's a matter of choice. Are you better at shifting or are you better at extending your fingers? And how is your bow control? Those are all things for which you must answer on your own. And then we go on to the end part here, which once again, we have a G sharp acacciatura in the upper third position there in measure 13. And it's very clever what I tried here. First, in measure 12, extension. And then you shift briefly to the upper second position, 4, 3, 1. And then shift a whole step up again to the upper third. And it's a 3 on the G sharp, 1 on the F sharp, 3 on the G sharp, 1, 3, 4, landing on the A. I'll play that now without stopping. Thank you for watching my video today on how to play Sein Ort die Wachten Siegen. Thank you for watching my video today on how to play Zion hört die Wächter singen from the fourth movement of the cantata number 140 by Johann Sebastian Bach. Yes, I did my best in the known as the sleeper's wake in English. And I want to really and I want to take this moment to also express my gratitude to everyone that has been supporting me this year on the channel. It's been very difficult, but I am getting through all this and getting much better. And as tradition with every Sacred Sunday, I have to testify. I had an extraordinary moment where I forgot this cello bow case on a plane in Paris. I left, was in the, in the middle of town, and I realized two hours later that this cello case bow with my beautiful Pernambuco bows inside of them, both of them custom made by my friend John Lee. These two wonderful bows were in that overhead cabin and I thought they were good as gone. There's no markings, no name, no nothing on it. So I, so I just prayed. That's all I had to do. Now, I don't pray when I want something. I pray always for others, but this time was the first time in a very long time where I asked the Lord for well, to help me get these back and get them back quickly. And the Lord smiled upon me. I went back there in person the next day, expecting nothing, but having faith that the goodness of the French people, the goodness of Air France, and the goodness of our Lord above was going to smile down upon me and say, hey, I'm carrying you along the speech of single footprints. And so... The best part of the news is I got them back. I can't describe to you the amount of happiness that filled my heart. I felt like I was walking on sunshine and it was pouring rain that day in Paris. And I held these bows close to my heart, thanking the Lord with every single step of the way. And this is why I share this story with you because it is a blessing to have cello in your life. It is a blessing to have these amazing artisan works of art, whether it's electric or acoustic. And it's a blessing to have the Lord above us smile down and say, you know what? I'll take care of you. I got this one. So yes, that's my testimony. I, I'm just real thankful, real, real thankful. I'm blessed. And so are you.
So wherever you are in the world, thank you again for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and know that someone up there is smiling upon you. And on that moment you need him most, he'll be there for you. He'll be there for you. May God bless you all. Bye for now.